Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5, Heredity. This is video number 12, and we're going to be trying to link the ideas of cell replication and species continuity. So our learning intention in this video is that you can assess the effect of cell replication processes on the continuity of species. So we want to have a look at some of the ideas that we've already introduced around cell replication and see what impact they have on the continuity of species. So three levels again, as usual, to try and measure yourself against. Firstly, you obviously need to know these terms, cell replication and continuity of species. Hopefully you can link these two ideas together in some way and, um, and beyond that to try and uh, deepen your response you want to be able to evaluate the impact of cell replication on the continuity of species. And as always in science courses we want to make sure that you have evidence that you can use in support of your arguments and evaluation. So what is the importance of cell um, and DNA replication? Well, firstly, the, way, the most important thing about DNA, I guess other than it's just amazing simplicity and complexity as a molecule, is that it is the chemical substance that helps ensures the continuity of life on Earth. The way that the DNA is structured, the base pairing arrangements, the way that the DNA can be copied, and the coding within the DNA that codes for proteins um, that are produced in the ribosomes, which we will look at uh, in subsequent videos, all contribute to the fact that this particular molecule is what we call a blueprint of life. And it's um, so universal and yet so unique. And they are part of, I guess, the, um, the wonder of biology, the fact that there is just uh, so much simplicity and so much complexity in one molecule that is common to all um, living organisms. The result of that, of course, is that um, accuracy is critically important in replication. And we actually know that accuracy is not a guarantee. We know that there are mistakes that are made. And in fact, the system is inbuilt to try and cope with some of those mistakes, to try and um, find those mistakes and correct them um, kind of like a proofreader before the information actually moves through into the um, cell division stages. So this information that's being carried in the DNA through the sequence of bases, specifically through G's, C's, A's and T's, and obviously on the other side of the complements, and hopefully each time you see these letters now they are starting to um, send off little signals in your head of what the complements are going to be. They are the ones that carry the information about important proteins that the cell is going to make, but they're the ones that need to be copied precisely each time the cells divide. Now we've looked at the processes of um, cell division, mitosis and meiosis, as two examples of cell division, one which is part of the cell cycle and one which is specifically around the creation of gametes. And the importance of DNA replication as a as important part of both of those two uh, cell division processes. And regulatory mechanisms that are part of these processes are what are known as cell uh, cycle checkpoints or places where the cell has an opportunity to proofread the coding before um, the next stage in the cycle occurs. So there's two main ideas that I want to uh, look at, I guess, in terms of species continuity. So remember, what we're looking here is to see what the link is between um, the replication of cells and DNA and species continuity. Now, species continuity comes down to ideas around natural selection. And natural selection, as we've seen before, operates um, at uh, variation, uh, selecting agent, or selecting pressure, and then reproduction. So if we're going to have all of these components, and that's going to ensure that the species not only continues, but also perhaps um, is capable of adapting to changes that are occurring in its environment, um, then we need to make sure that we understand particularly where this variation is coming from. Obviously, we've looked at the process of meiosis and some of the variation that can occur in the processes of sexual reproduction, but we also want to make sure that we focus in a little bit on some of the variation. 
So continuity of species obviously depends on effective reproduction. It's no point in having the uh, best genes in the world. If you don't pass them on to the next generation, they die with you. That's the end of those great genes. So if species are going to continue, they have to be able to continue to pass those genes, pass that genetic code on from generation to generation. Reproduction for most multicellular organisms depends on individuals reaching a, a, an age or a stage where they are mature and capable of reproduction, either sexually or asexually. And we do know that sexual reproduction is the one that introduces more variation for a number of reasons, uh, not the least of which is that two separate cells are coming together to form one new cell. So sexual reproduction in and of itself is a great source of um, variation and obviously when we look at the processes of meiosis as we understand how those chromosomes separate that gives us a little bit of an idea about where some of that variation is coming from. In addition to reproduction we also need to look at diversity. Uh, diversity is not just about the continuity of individual species but it's also about how a species, how the gene pool um, has sufficient resources in order to be able to change when the environment changes. And that's going to rely on some variation within the species. So it's important that we have a range of different species. We know that uh, when we study ecology, that a lot of organisms interact with one another, a lot of different species interact with one another, either um, as uh, mutual in mutualism, in commensalism, uh, as predator-prey, as host parasite, all sorts of different interactions that occur between different groups of organisms. But there must also be some diversity within the species because evolution is going to operate on that variation. And this diversity is actually uh, created by a number of important processes, many of which we can link back or explain in the context of um, cell reproduction or DNA replication or some combination of both of these. So let's just have a look at a quick list and we will unpack these a little bit more in class, go through each of these because I think each one's very important, but let's look at a few different sources of variation. So here's a little list of variation. We firstly looked at sexual reproduction and obviously you're going to um, specifically look at things like meiosis and how the process of meiosis produces variation in the sperm and the egg and then the combination of fertilization uh, bringing those different sperm and eggs together and we know that just looking at families the same father sperm and the same mother's eggs do not produce identical children uh, except in in the cases of identical twins um, parents can have a number of different children and they may look similar but they don't look identical so that mixing of the variation that's built into the process of meiosis during the formation of eggs and sperm then is acted upon by the process of fertilization which uh, mixes things around a little bit more now, one of the things that's important that we start to look at is some of these processes that are quite important um, as the whole process of DNA replication and cell division occurs. And we need to look at this from both the gene level and also the chromosome level. So firstly, if we look at random segregation, random segregation tends to look at the chromosome level. So that is, um, if you think about the fact that you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one of which came from your um, father and one of which came from your mother, then when you produce eggs or sperm, one of each of these pairs is going to go into that egg or sperm. But it's not true to say that, you know, the 23 that you inherited from your father are all going to go into the one gamete. Maybe 22 from your father and one from your mother. Maybe 12 from your father and 13 from your, um, and 11 from your mother. I'm trying to get my maths right. Um, any, any of these combinations is possible. This is the important thing about random segregation is that there's no particular, it's not like the father's chromosomes all hang around together and the mother's chromosomes all hang around together. It's randomly segregated. We separate them out into the sperm and the egg 
in a random kind of a way. There's no reason to suggest, unless there are other reasons to suggest, that they would go anywhere together with a certain pair or in certain combinations. Now, the other thing that we can talk about is independent assortment. Independent assortment tends to refer more to things like alleles or genes. And we haven't looked much at this yet. You've probably looked a little bit about genetic inheritance, perhaps in year 10. Um, but we need to uh, move on a little bit more in this topic before we get to this in a bit more detail. So for now, the key thing is the assumption that we make in independent assortment is any gene that codes for any particular characteristic can be uh, inherited independent of any other. So therefore, it's not necessary that if you have blonde hair and that you would inherit that with blue eyes, that you could have combinations of a blonde and brown or brown hair and blue or any of those sorts of things. Now, we do know that there are exceptions to this rule as well. There are certain genes which for some reason get inherited, um, and we'll see why this is the case later, uh, get inherited more often as a combination rather than um, get assorted independently. But the fact that all of these different genes for all of these different characteristics, we're going to look at the fact that all of these code for specific types of proteins, are all inherited independent of one another is another potential source of great variation um, for the individuals. We've looked also at the fact that in meiosis we have this um, phenomenon known as crossing over. So even if, for example, I had a sperm cell that had 23 chromosomes from my original father, um, it may well be that during crossing over, one of those has a little bit of information from one of my mother's chromosomes anyway. So even the fact that that very unlikely um, sperm would exist, um, that there is still potential for variation for some crossing over of the genetic material. And we're just talking about chemical bonds here, it, usually hydrogen bonds breaking and reforming. Um, so these sorts of things certainly can happen. And we've also talked about uh, mutation, which basically uh, are mistakes. Now, mutations can be caused by certain mutagens, um, but for our purposes here, what we're talking about is mutation is simply a mistake. So maybe uh, where it was ATC, it's become TTC. So a little change that occurs somewhere, a substituted base. Uh, some of these are more likely to occur than others, and again, for reasons that we'll see a little bit later on. But just one mistake that's made in that um, process of copying can create a mutation. And mutations can have one of three um, uh, effects, uh, zero, uh, it can be beneficial, uh, or it can be detrimental. And we'll look at all of those in a little bit uh, more detail in future videos. So this has been a, a not too quick um, rush through of some of these important sources of variation and how the processes of cellular replication and reproduction can contribute to continuity of the species and especially diversity within species. Thanks for watching.